tell them the truth, even if it was a hard thing to say. And you'd find a way to say it with empathy and with love, but you wouldn't lie to them. And so the idea that you would hide results because you are afraid of what people would say or how they would feel or how it would affect your career, it's just never been about me. It's about the folks in the neighborhoods we're trying to help. What, what are you seeking? Because, you know, sometimes um, everybody's seeking something else. Like for me, you know, I have a certain life that I've lived and I'm trying to get to the bottom of a certain truth for myself that to, to maybe tie a certain uh, uh, issue in the past, conflicts that I was trying to overcome. What, what answer are you trying to get to the bottom of for yourself? I'm going to put every ounce of effort I have in trying to make sure that uh, kids, black or brown, don't have to endure what I did to get here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make the journey worth it. What's going on, everyone? Talks King here today. In today's video, I want to kind of give my analysis and reaction to uh, Patrick Bed David episode where he interviewed the Harvard professor. You might might have seen him as my channel trailer about him exposing a study that there was that proved that there was no racial bias in policing. And first of all, many people like Black Americans, right? They commit more crimes. They tend to make up the the proportionality of criminals, right? You're thirty percent of the population, but you're committing almost fifty percent of the crimes. Of course, you're going to go to jail more. Of course, you're going to have more interactions with the cops compared to other groups of people. And these criminals do not make up the majority of black pe folks. So I don't understand why black people have this idea that, oh, my God, the police is going to shoot me for no reason. Right. Even when they pulling over. Right. Black people like to make this claim about, oh, uh, police pull me over while black. When there's stats that show that black people drive faster than any other race in America. So therefore, if you're speeding more often than other people, you're more likely to get pulled over by the cops. I'm just saying. So uh, here, Eric Fryer, we, uh, Roland Fryer, sorry, and he's going to get into it with uh, Patrick McDavid. They're talking about how uh, how much courage it took to expose this study, and uh, we'll just take a look together. So let's watch this video. And bravery and brass to do this. Keep in mind, 2009, I think you're one of the top 100 Time Magazine and at the time, if you're 45 today, you're, you're, what, 30 at that time, 30 years old to be on time. I mean, that's a prestigious place to be. When you were reporting this, how much did you think about this could potentially affect my career? Not at all. I think I was just naive, man. Uh, you call it brave. Maybe I was just dumb. But <laughs> I, I didn't think about it at all, honestly. Um, and I have an attitude that if you tell me I can't do something, I'll show you that I can and so when people said, oh, you can't publish this, it, it, it wasn't coming from a place where they cared about me or cared about the people in the neighborhoods who I've been working for since I got to Harvard. And so my basic view was, look, the people in the street know the truth, and, and we can't keep lying to them, right? Like, I mean, I, I said the same uh, different time in that clip you showed. I, 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 I say all the time, like, the conversations we're having in academia don't hit the ground in the neighborhoods that I care the most about, right? Like if you go to my old neighborhood, and we talked about Louisville before mm -hmm. the show, you go to Louisville and call someone BIPOC, they'll punch you in your face, mm -hmm. right? Like that's not, they don't, they don't care about those kinds of things. And so I've always had the view that if this was your family, you'd tell them the truth, even if it was a hard thing to say. And, you and I think that's lost on a lot of people. I think like a lot of people, I, I, this is what I'm thinking that we live in a time and age where everyone wants to hear, like, find things that back up what they already think about the world, right? People are looking for studies to prove a preconceived conclusion instead of the, the studies leading to a conclusion. And this is what led me into this conclusion of mine that I believe that, hey, uh, racial disparities only prove the results that every race does. Data only proves a result, not a narrative. All right. But in the it seems like many people in academia, a lot of these people who live in the theoretical they seem to want the the data to prove their narrative when that's not the case. All the data shows the results. When you show me, oh, look, you look at the disparities of wealth between white and black people. I go, OK, there's a lot of things that can explain the wealth gap between black and white people. White people, on average, are older than the black groups. Last time I checked, older Americans make more money than younger Americans. So, boom, I just proved the racial, the wealth gap right there. On average, white people are older than black people. Black people tend to be younger. Black people tend to not have degrees at the same rate as white people, which is supposed to be a correlation with more income. But no one wants to look for this. It seems like everyone's looking for confirmation. 
And I think when Roland Fryer came out with that study, a lot of people didn't want their narrative to be questioned about police brutality. And this is what I'm talking about. It's like, and I got someone in my comment section that told me that, oh, Kenny, you need to speak with more compassion about your own. Uh, you don't even understand all the systemic, all this stuff. And I'm like, yo, look, I'm done trying to blame things outside of the group. It's time the group looks inward. We've done 50, 60, 70 years of this already. And we're still at the bottom. If, if your way of criticizing the world worked, we would have been in a better place. So it's, it's, it's showing me, especially from history, that it's not the system that's affecting black people. It's black people's own decision makers that's impacting their outcomes. That has the biggest impact on our situation. We're not starting businesses at the same rate as everyone else. And when we do start businesses, we don't get much support from our own people. That's the reality. Asians will support Asians. Hispanics will support Hispanics. White people will support everybody as long as you got a good product. But black people have this almost this entitlement when they start business that, oh, everyone's supposed to just give me business. But you don't provide service. I forgot. There was a food critic. I forgot his name already. And I'll end off this video here because I, I got to go. I You know, new job. You know, it's been hard making videos for you guys, but I'm, I'm trying to put the time in for you guys right now. There, there was a food critic that he went to Atlanta and he said, oh, my God, I got bad service. I got this. I got that. They ran him out of town. He, he felt he was a threat of his life. And this is the kind of, I guess, standards that we have. This is what happens when you have a community that only pushes uh, low standards, that gives special treatment to its own. Oh, I don't need to. I don't. You don't need good customer service. You black. You better take this dollar. Like, this is why black people don't support much black businesses, because they don't want to compete. They feel entitled to your business because they're black owned. And this is the kind of special treatment that we're giving black folks. And then black folks are getting mad when people are saying, oh, you're an affirmative action I or oh, you're DEI. Because DEI and affirmative action is creating the same effect as white privilege. Black people don't like that. But I, I, I commend it, uh, Rolling and Fryer, if you want to watch the whole clip or the whole 32-minute video, it's in the link in the description below. I really appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.